Well, this sucks. <laughs> I was uh, not even planning on making a video about all this old GL stuff and all of the drama surrounding the open gaming license, OGL 1.1a, all this kind of stuff. But I wanted to at least make my stance known and make uh, talk about it so that the people that care about all of this when, can find out where I'm headed, what my thoughts are, my solution and plan going forward with all of this. Because, man, I had a whole video for today. I have a build and encounter system, how to build badass encounters, a whole PDF, a whole breakdown of trying to help you guys make better encounters. And then there's this, you know, shit storm brewing around. But anyway, uh, I want to talk about what this means for you, what this means for third party content creators like myself and what I'm going to be doing about it. And I guess also what you can do about it in the middle of all of this. So uh, for normal people out there that aren't third-party content creators that just consume and play D&D, &D, which is the vast majority of people, uh, I'm very much in a minority here. Um, all this means for you really is third-party content created for Dungeons and Dragons is going to go to very, very low, bad levels. Uh, and that's a big problem because a lot of the stuff created by third-party content creators are better than the Wizards of the Coast stuff in, in, in all reality. They are just, they are one company. If you have so many people and so many different skilled people coming together to make stuff, some of it's just going to be better than the original source material. I have a book, Alcanor's Almanac, that, that I have some, some uh, passionate feelings about, but I'm probably biased there. But there's so many amazing content creators out there that create amazing stuff and take Dungeons & Dragons to another level. And that's been the awesome, beautiful, symbiotic relationship that Wizards of the Coast is now just stabbing in the back. But we'll get into that. Uh, so in general, if you just play D&D, &D, you're just going to have less options of things out there to be able to play as far as other content created stuff. You'll have only the stuff really from Dungeons and & Dragons and only the stuff that people that want to stick with that uh, are creating, which less less content in the market, less uh, options, just is only not, is, it's only not a good thing, right? More options, the better, is how, how it's always been. And as far as history repeating itself, this has happened before with 3.5 edition, edition and fourth edition and all that kind of stuff. So anyway, um, what this means for third-party content creators, uh, if you want to get the full breakdown, the best breakdown I've seen is D&D Shorts. He did a whole breakdown just literally a few hours ago about all of this and like point by point listed off exactly what all of this means. It was amazing. I'll link it down in the description. A huge great breakdown just for the, anyone to watch and know what's going on here. Because uh, I talked to one, my, my best friend talked to me yesterday. He's like, what's all this OGL stuff? What do you think about it? I'm like, oh man, I, he had no idea that it was, uh, it's bad as it is and as uh, gloom and doomy as as it is but um, basically uh, if I were like open gaming license allows people to create the uh, content within uh, of Dungeons and Dragons the OGL is an open gaming license which is like one D&D said uh, is a watered down version of the game that gives you just some bits and pieces to be able to create content for the game which has been great and what I've you know I've been using some of my stuff I've created uses it some of my stuff doesn't it's a that's a long story so if I were to agree to this new OGL, they are replacing the old one and killing the old one, even though it was supposed to never be killed. But, oh well. Uh, it literally was a document said, we will never get rid of this. And then people are building livelihoods around it. And then, swoop. That, but anyway. Um, <laughs> so, uh, this new one that they're coming out with, brand new one. Uh, if you were to agree, if I were to agree to it, which I won't be, just spoilers right there. If I were to agree to it, I would have to submit all of my earnings to Wizards of the Coast, like another legal entity, like a, like the like taxes. I'd have to report to them everything and run through every single piece of content that I'm going to make, that I'm in the process of making. Whenever I do make it and sell it for, how much I sell it for, I have to g jump through a bunch of legal hoops and, and all that kind of stuff. Um, also, anything that I do publish under the open gaming license, which is really a closed gaming license, but anyway... Um, um, they now own that. That's the, that one is the part that kills me the most. Is I make this thing underneath this banner of Dungeons and Dragons that kind of spur this whole thing. And that's been another thing with all of this. All these content creators, like I, I hope I have I have spawned and spurred and grown the love of D and D in lots of different ways. And now this is weird. Uh, see, I'm getting I'm getting I'm getting emotional about it again. All right, let me stay focused. Let me stay focused. Um, anything that I would make under this license, they can now use. That's the craziest part. So if I were to publish something and I made an awesome rest system per se, like one of my favorite rules that I have is my rest system. If it was awesome and amazing and it had kicked off and did so well, and they would know it did so well because I'd be reporting all of my earnings to them, they could then take that piece put it into one of their books and sell it as their own, not even asking me, not even pay paying me, telling me anything, right? Which that just feels 
they're literally stealing content. So anyway, um, and then the next fourth part is Kickstarters. Uh, a large part of how I'm able to do what I'm able to do was my Kickstarter. My Patreon and my Kickstarter have been the two things that have been able to let me be able to do what I'm doing right now. And they are taking down one of those two pillars of Kickstarters. Uh, basically 20% of all money off the top, not profits, like f money raised. It, which is just kills Kickstarters. Mo in fact, most profits of Kickstarters are less than 20%. So the profit that people make from Kickstarters would just be absolutely taken, and then you're just left with literally nothing. Uh, so Kickstarters would be the fourth pillar, and then also on top, the cherry on top, is they can change this at any time. They can change the conditions under this at any time. So therefore, um, in general, I will not be operating under the OGL under its current state right now. Uh, I, I don't know what its finals are going to be, but I'm trying to make this to communicate to you guys early, and then I will make another video if things change or they backpedal or whatever's going on. So uh, but what this means for me now, it's really scary. Um, I am in a weird, I'm in an interesting spot, and I think it maybe one of the, uh, it's just, it's a bad spot. Of I'm not a big dog. I'm not one of the big top dogs like Critical Role and Matt Colville and all these people that have these big, huge, gigantic situations where they're going to have to make some moves and make some deals, but they have a lot of street cred and a lot of clout to be able to make deals and make some pretty good deals probably to be able to keep doing what they're doing at the big top dog level. And then I'm also not at the very entry level of just an up and I, I was a, a few years ago or a year ago even of a budding content creator trying to make stuff as I have a I, I was a teacher I was a coach I had a, this was a side hustle and then it turned into my full-time job a few months ago I quit teaching to go and do this full-time so I just barely ah made the leap to full-time and then a month later I get told uh, an article drops on the 5th and I have to the 13th to figure out this uh, oh well, by the way uh, everything that you've been doing yeah it's all gonna change Wow, wow. So I think that is a, quite an interesting spot for this me in the middle type person where I just made enough to go full time. I am the sole uh, money provider for the family, my wife and my two kids, and now uh, this happens. So uh, I'm in this weird middle, middle ground spot there, uh, just for some perspective there. Uh, and the, the part that I think that hits me the most, and this is like at a principal level, or I'm a, I'm a pretty emotional person. I have a lot of energy in my videos, and a lot of that's my, my hype and emotions of stuff. I have wear my heart in my sleeve. Uh, I feel like I got backstabbed by the company that I have loved, and I have appreciated and been thankful for me making a living with. With, and I, I say that with, like symbiotically. Like I make videos about every book that comes out, I try and hype them up. And if they're good, I have definitely had videos where I was like, mm, I don't know about this one, but I try and fill in the gaps. I just did a Spelljammer resource uh, where I, I fixed the Spelljammer gaps. So they had this, they released these three books and there was a bunch of gaps. So I went in and patched up the gaps and, and then there we go. And it's, I'm, I've been trying to be symbiotic with them and pay respects to them and their system for so long and, and, and speak good words and one D and D and then I being so excited about one D and D and all the stuff that I'm planning and was in the process of doing to just get backstabbed by it with rules and implications and processes that literally target exactly me, third-party content creators uh, of all kinds, right? At all levels, across the board. It's not just me. It's, it's, it's all of us, and it's a huge, uh, schemey, slimy type of uh, deal that they are rolling with. But we'll see what happens with that. So um, that's <laughs> what it means for me. But my solution now, like what is the what is the solution? The whole point of, of me trying to ma make this video is, is a lot of this solution is going to be dependent on y'all. I want to know what my community is because the two big pillars of what's going to help uh, me get through this is my team that I have that have been working with me from the from for years now uh, the dungeon company team of, of, of this awesome group of people that have came together started off as volunteers and now through things doing so well I am now paying and facilitating multiple other people's jobs and careers too. people that rely on the things that I pay them to pay their bills so I have not only am I trying to provide for my family but there are multiple people that are un in my company that I am also helping to help pay their bills and I, I worry for them too. So this team is going to be a huge pillar of, of, of awesomeness and the community that we've built is going to be the two things that help get through this whole thing. Um, I appreciate <laughs> everyone involved with all of this and what I mean by uh, this this fluid dynamicness of where, where my uh, where I'm going to be going with this is on the community side of things. I want to know what you guys are thinking, right? Because 
Dungeons and Dragons. Are we still going to play Dungeons and Dragons? Do you shift over to a different game system? Do I go? There's lots of different options, and I'm going to get into that here in just a second. But I'm really wanting to know the feedback of my community. I want to know the feedback of my, the viewers here on YouTube. What kind of videos do I make on YouTube? That's crazy. I've I had to make D and D videos because if I made a video about any other system, it did absolutely terrible. Other content creators have talked about this. I made a cogent. I really love the cogent system, and I worked with Jazza and the creator of this cogent, another role play system. Um, I worked with him and in, in helped try to brainstorm this thing. I made videos on it, and they were the worst videos I'd ever made. It has nothing to do with how good of a game system it is, but Dungeons and Dragons is a titan, and I essentially have to make D and D videos. But now. Uh, what do I do, right? If I if this if this has happened, I've just gotten backstabbed. What what's happened? It feels weird to make content for D and D, but now it's I, I want to make some sort of um, system agnostic stuff. Is that the direction I go? So I'm really wanting to know from the YouTube side of things. What do you guys want to see from me? What would you be interested in seeing during all of this? Because I'm not trying to blow things up. I'm not trying to say like, oh, I'm out of here. I'm never making another thing of D and D ever again. I'm not trying to be gloom and doomy about it, but it definitely sits with me a little weird. And most of the stuff I do, if you go through and look at all my content, a lot of it you could take, and, and I've had people leave comments about it from other game systems. So Dungeon Master advice can apply to any game master. So I'm going to be giving game master advice now. I'm going to be giving different rules and ways to run your game that could be applied in lots of different ways to any game. So uh, for all you D&D people out there, I don't want you to worry. I, I am still going to be making content that is D&D applicable, right? Um, and also at the same time, not just the YouTuber side of or the YouTuber, YouTube viewer side of things is also the patron side of things. I have a Patreon that has been the huge driving force of this channel since the beginning and it is i'm going to be heavily looking to my patrons and the community of patrons of what do you guys want to see because not only do i make youtube videos i also make content every single month i make uh, digital resources and, and and game master materials that you can use in your games every single month and that content and what is that in the future of that it's going to heavily depend on the patrons and what they want to support i have plans and i'm going to i'm going to start to make, make things going but every single like monthly i'm going to be checking in with feedback and stuff to see what you guys want because right now my overall plan <laughs> my, overall plan, <laughs> my overall plan with this oh this is such a crazy time my overall plan with this is um <clears throat> three things one i want to make free D, D content because i'm not going to charge for the D, &D content because under the open gaming license and then that's a whole thing so i'm just going to make cool stuff and share it with you guys which is fine and that's legal i'm going to make sure that uh, that's legal i don't know i'm scared at this point to do anything but i'm gonna make cool i have a bard rework that i already have finished it's already completed it is good to go it's i'm super excited to release it uh not this week but next week's video is the bard video super excited i'm going to share that for absolutely free. The entire thing I'm just gonna post and it's gonna be free. And if you appreciate that and you like that, then you can do things like joining my Patreon because that's the type of thing that, that's gonna be my fuel now because uh, I can't make things for D&D anymore. So the only thing I can do is the Patreon <laughs> as far as the fuel that helps grow the team, fuel the team and fuel the creation, fuel everything, right? Um, that's one plan I'm gonna try and do because I was already gonna do that. I was already, I was hyped about 1D&D, &D, I was hyped about all this stuff and I was gonna try and add stuff to the pile. So I'm gonna be creating some free content and seeing how well that's received uh, as far as the support that I get from it, the hype that is generated from it and if y'all are like that, if you appreciate that, if you, if you whatever, right? That's one level. Second level is um, on my Patreon, I'm going to be making system agnostic things and I'm gonna be posting on my website as well as resources that you could use for any game system. And I say that with a slant towards D&D because that's where I came from. So a lot of this stuff, the, the open gaming license being this whole thing and if they put that out there and I say, no, I'm not gonna do the open gaming license, I still will be able to create content. I'll still be able to create resources I just have to watch and make sure that I don't, you know, I step around and I don't touch the OGL hot buttons, right? And I can just make content. And a lot of the stuff that I make, the majority of the stuff that I make, it should be fine and free and, and, and um, free of the OGL and not I'm not using uh, I'm not writing adventures that use uh, the their gods names like Lolf, the Spider Queen, and all these other types of things, right? I am I am going to make stuff agnostically that you could definitely use in D and D. So if you've already been a patron, you've already been liking the stuff that I make, you still will like the stuff I make. I'm just going to be making it a system agnostic version of it. 
another thing, a third part of this, and this is the um, <clears throat> maybe the exciting thing, and this this whole. D&D drama has been a catalyst now to me launching my own game system. This has been something that's been in the works already for years. And if you liked Alcander's Almanac, of all things, Alcander's Almanac is a uh, precursor, is a hint into the uh, direction of what I want to do with my own game. I have been working on things like this. I have a full magic system. I have a fully flushed out, finished magic system for this new game it is a d20 uh, system game it's going to feel very it's going to feel very uh, much at home to dungeons and dragons uh d20 based system where you have checks and classes and all that kind of stuff um and i have a lot of uh, passion for this and i've wanted to do this and it was i can say this now it was going to be my fourth or fifth kickstarter and i had, I had all my kickstarters planned out but i'm gonna to have to cancel two of them for sure the next one coming out should be still fine i'm gonna make sure and double check on some things uh but the kickstarter i'm gonna be launching about uh, uh creating and crafting magic items and gold and economics of the game and all that stuff now i can just make that apply towards running your games and how to run gold and creating items in your game as it doesn't have to have anything to do with DD, and i'll still be able to make that but uh i might have to uh, bump up the timeline on my own game system and in this game system i, I i'm telling you uh, if you like D&D, you're going to like this and it's going to feel good and it's going to still be simple but customizable. And that's the other part of this is whenever I do make my game system, it's not going to be this is the way it is. It's going to be here is the game. And I want to also have an advanced version or a hardcore version or different ways to tweak the game. Because if people are playing this game, I should be able to have multiple options of different ways that, that people can play it because one group is not the same as another group. And that was my whole philosophy without Kenner's Almanac of all, of all things. But that's what my system is going to be with, with my new open game system. It's going to be, I, whenever I make the system, I'm going to have an, a, a true OGL for it that's locked in stone for shareable people can create content for it, whatever. That's going to be a whole journey there. So if you want, if you're excited about that or interested about that, also, joining Patreon and my Patreon support would be helping to fuel that fire and get it to a spot where I could launch a Kickstarter to be able to print it and make it into something fully, fully, fully finished and fully, fully developed. There's going to be a lot of playtesting, and my patrons are going to get a first shot at all the different rules. I'm going to be releasing anything that I have and ready to release. It's going to go straight to my patrons first on top of everything that I make monthly. So uh, it's really going to be uh, the patrons are going to help uh, get me through this thing because I have to. We'll see what happens with the kickstarter um but that's kind of the direction of everything and now it leaves us with what can you do what can you do in all of this uh the biggest thing is to let your voice be heard but i would say be kind about it i know this is i don't want to i don't want to send people with pitchforks and, and fire and all that kind of stuff right be be kind and be pointing it with your thoughts don't just be a rage monster out there and start slurring and and being 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 evil out there okay uh, i don't want to incite a riot in that way um uh, let your voice be heard though let's this is this is ridiculous this is one of the craziest uh most greedy manipulative type of contracts that i've seen and if a lot of people have seen in gaming history so uh, make your voice heard about it. Uh, hashtag open D&D, uh, Twitter and stuff. I'm not a, that big on Twitter, but just make your voice be heard and let, let Wizards of the Coast know that this is kind of crazy and this is not, not good for the game. And it's been proven in history as well. Uh, and then support third-party content creators. Uh, it might, I, I am one of those. And if you want to support me in all the ways that I just talked about, you totally can. But there's also other third-party content creators out there that are in, in the same spot that I am. They're in a spot where they're trying to do this full-time and this might absolutely kill that dream of theirs that they were about to be able to do and I, that my heart literally just now broke for them I could imagine if I was at that spot where I'm about to make the leap to full time to accomplish this dream and this announcements released damn right um, and also all the people that we love the, all the critical roles the, the 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 big dogs out there that are doing this thing they might need support now too with other things. I know they're huge big dogs and they make millions and all that stuff, so they might be fine, who knows, and they might have deals, I don't know. So I would really say to focus on the little, the littler, the smaller content creators that like like myself and others that are in a rough spot now uh, with whatever the future holds for uh, Dungeons and Dragons and for content creators in general. Uh, and then um, I would also say the last thing is decide how much 
decide where you stand on D and D, and if you're going to pl- play this game system moving forward. Decide if you're going to. I'm going to. I I, uh, I I could show you if I press buttons right now. Uh, I I I bought Pathfinder Second Edition. I bought Pathfinder Second Edition, and that's that book's on the way. And I'm going to look into other game systems and kind of look around and just. I have to. I feel like I have to as a as a, as to be able to uh, navigate the future for me and my family and all of this and the direction of the channel. I have to be able to stay on my toes now and uh, be ready to move in a, in in any direction so uh think about where you're gonna go with all of this and the weird spot that i'm in now is tonight literally in a couple hours i am launching uh my uh new DD campaign i have all my friends coming over to that i got all my miniatures and stuff that are here uh i'm i'm, I'm running a DD module even curse of strahd like how crazy is this i love dungeons and dragons and then this happens, right? And, and I get just sl- hit, stabbed in the back with it. Not really even a slap in the face. This is a stab in the back. Um, and so I'm going to have to be reevaluating where my stance is on D and D and how much I, you know, uh, in, in playing it. I was looking into another game system. In fact, I might even just my next campaign I run. I will. I'm still going to run Curse of Strahd. I am going to be uh, uh, posting those videos of gameplay on my Patreon, and I'm going to have that there as a first little experiment of me uh, filming game sessions and everything. I have all my Dungeon Master binders, all the different stuff that I try and again thank my patrons for because they are going to be the thing that gets me through this and this community coming together and us trying to figure this whole thing out because this is. The most stressful time in uh, the hobby right now that I've ever seen. Uh, I had I, I was a teacher for years. I was a math teacher, so that's a great job security there. A math teacher, I can get a job anywhere as a math teacher. Uh, and now the job security is is at an all time scary level with all of this happening. So um, support the people out there that you care about. And this is me sounding the alarm for that. If you if your favorite person is another D and D content creator, check in to see if they have a Patreon. Check to see what they got on their website. Um, Love them up because right now is a really, really scary time for all of us. And um, I appreciate everybody in this community. I appreciate uh, the patrons. I appreciate you watching this video. I appreciate you sharing this video. I appreciate subscribers and all that kind of stuff because it all adds up in the big picture to help out uh, with us all coming together to get through this thing together. So we'll see what happens with this future. Uh, And I'm going to keep staying creative. (laughs) And I'm going to have to think outside that box. Peace.